Tonight, we take you on a tour of the region's newest centre for independent living for the elderly and finding the best in the business of keeping customers happy in Broken Hill. This is Southern Cross News with Alison Drower. Hello, thanks for joining us. We start tonight with confirmation from SA Police that major crime detectives are in Wyala as investigations continue into the unsolved murder of Peter Seaford. In 1989, Peter Seaford was 31 years old when he was brutally bashed to death in his home in Wyala. Police have always suspected the assault was motivated by robbery and a $200,000 reward is now on offer for anyone with information that can lead to an arrest. If you have any information relating to this cold case, please contact Crime Stoppers. Well, they say sport can be a real motivator for improving self-esteem and keeping kids focused on learning. This week, students from the far north to the Air Peninsula met and heard from some of the state's top athletes, including players from the Adelaide Crows. With the Sasta Shield just months away, young Aboriginal athletes from across the region had the chance to fine-tune the skills needed to tackle the best in the state. And they really appreciate the opportunity to come together as, as a team. This week's two-day sports program marries the physical and the theory. Students were hooked up to GPS trackers and heart rate monitors while they trained. They can then go and implement that data into their work at school. I think it's really important because students um, want for their learning to be relevant. Students were also put through their paces by former Adelaide Crows players, as well as basketballers from the Adelaide 36ers and Lightning Clubs. Their skills were like unreal. They, from what we were expecting, they were incredible. It's a great lead in to the Sasta Shield in November. The carnival will see an intrastate battle in cricket, basketball and AFL-X. I think we're going to go pretty good yeah. since we had a bit of a run session through this. Organisers say the camaraderie between students from different schools and regions is one of the most positive aspects of the program. Garth Burley, Southern Cross News. An Indigenous group in Port Augusta will now wait on expert opinion on human rights laws before the Supreme Court can move on an injunction on the voting process around the proposed nuclear waste facility for the region. The Bangala people argue they are being discriminated against because their land is sitting outside of the council jurisdiction, not giving them the right to vote. The court injunction will remain in place while the case is referred to the Human Rights Commission. Broken Hills business community is ready to acknowledge those who keep the city well serviced. Nominations are now open for the Far West Business Awards, with the clients and customers also encouraged to vote in several public awards. Get your nominations in. This is our fifth year for the Business Awards, so it's a fantastic event. The Far West Business Awards shines a light on the outstanding businesses around the region. There's 16 categories presented throughout the night, including Best New Business, Employee of the Year and the Major Outback Spirit Award. For any business to receive recognition as an award winner, is something that they can use later on as in, as in their own promotion of their own business. So it is very important. Businesses can submit their own nominations and their customers and clients can also put forward a contender. The categories for the People's Choice are favourite tradie, their most popular business and service with a smile. And so there are nomination processes for that as well. There are sheets available that can be collected from the RDA office or it is available online at the Far West Business Awards website. Nominations close on September 21, with RDA Far West offering to help anyone struggling to make a submission. The Far West Business Awards will be held in November. Patrick Reinke, Southern Cross News. And still in Broken Hill, a debutante ball will tonight provide a glamorous backdrop for the first big event at the newly renovated Broken Hill Civic Centre. The centre reopened earlier this month and tonight a group of Silver City single ladies will take the floor of the main auditorium with their Deb partners for the traditional Welcome to Society event. The next event will be a little less refined with the local footy league's best and fairest night happening on Monday. Staff at Barunga Village in Port Broughton have been given a grand tour of a new multi-million dollar aged care facility opening on Monday. The facility is designed to give house members more independence. 
It's a state-of-the-art $9 million facility aimed at improving aged care in our region. We're here for the long term, we're not going away, so it, it makes people come here to retire and makes those people that are already living here want to stay here. Staff members who toured the four houses were impressed by the brightly coloured walls and living areas, all a part of a groundbreaking model in dementia care. So one house is a domestic house and the other one is a more sensory house. And then we have two houses for people who don't live with dementia. The extension has seen 32 new rooms built and each house member has their own room, bathroom and access to the laundry and kitchen facilities. The homes promote a safe and independent space where house members can live as independently as they please. House members are set to move in from Monday morning. They're going to be able to do a lot more things that they would have done at home, like help with their washing, help prepare meals, um, yeah, a lot more engaged. The build has created a number of new jobs for locals and there's still more to come from Barunga Village in Port Broughton. We anticipate that we'll be building another house of eight in the very near future. Rachel Nell, Southern Cross News. Port Lincoln locals are being asked to provide some feedback on a new draft plan for the city's open spaces and nature reserves. The public open space strategy has been developed to identify the coastal town's parks and reserves and how they can be improved, with some parks desperately needing upgrades more than others. It's really for matter for, a matter for us and the community to say, well, how do we manage that open space? How many of the irrigated lawns do we need? How much of the natural bush do we need? Um, have we got uh, potential areas for dog parks? And you can see the draft plans on Council's website or just drop into the office and you are encouraged to submit your ideas before the 7th of September. Still to come tonight with spring in the air, it's a nice day for a wedding expo in Port Lincoln this weekend. Welcome back. Well, this weekend, police will be out in force across the Gulf and on main roads to Adelaide, targeting speeding. New data suggests excessive speed accounts for 41% of fatal crashes on the state's roads. The risk of a fatality doubles when a driver speeds more than 10 kilometres over the limit. The high visibility operation will run until midnight on Monday. In Port Augusta, volunteers with the Narilda Ramsey Auxiliary are putting in long hours trying to raise more money for local aged care services. Garth Burley has this report. It's the community group with a big heart, bringing joy to our oldest and dearest. And the main goal of the uh, auxiliary is to raise funds that are then used to enhance the lives of the residents. A recent merger of the two auxiliaries from Narilda Nursing Home and Ramsey Village now means volunteers can work between the two. We got about 36 people who now do baking for us for our events. All money raised will stay in recreational programs for the nursing homes, with recent visits by a caricature artist, singers and a magician. You know, they, they were happy, you know, it's about bringing happiness really and that's, that's what it's all about. The Auxiliary is holding the third of their breakfast programs on the 9th of September at the Port Augusta Yacht Club and they're encouraging the community to grab a morning meal or for a good cause. It's a nice setting and it's a way for people to support the work of the Auxiliary. Garth Burley, Southern Cross News. A Port Lincoln charter company is leading a beach clean-up this weekend as part of Keep Australia Beautiful Week. From 9am on Sunday, Adventure Bay Charters will be ferrying people from the Port Lincoln jetty just over the bay to Boston Island. We're going to originally do it with our staff, but we've opened it up uh, to the public. Uh, if anyone would like to come and join us, contact our office. We'll organise the ferry time, get you over there and back again. The day will involve clearing rubbish from the island's beaches with a barbecue to raise some cash for the local SES. Everyone has a box of old photos sitting in a cupboard or garage and Broken Hill City Council is getting a hand in ensuring that its precious items are preserved for generations to come. Council has won a grant of $400,000 to digitise the city's art gallery and mineral collection. Cultural works going digital. This means that you and I don't have to pop into the art gallery to see it, that visitors across the world could actually see this collection, but also it's about pres preserving the collection for the future. The New South Wales government is pushing ahead with its digitisation research project. 
Broken Hill and Orange will enjoy the lion's share of funding, which aims to catalogue regional artworks for online viewing. So we're very excited that we're going to be that pilot project, um, but we're also excited that this will be preserving the vision that we have around the heritage of Broken Hill. And this goes towards what we keep saying is that we're working every day on the future of Broken Hill by preserving the heritage. A curator for Museums and Galleries New South Wales has already visited the city to begin gathering data for the collection. But it's going to take time to take those photos to get the collection together. But now we'll have the funds to employ someone to be able to do that. So that's great. Patrick Roynke, Southern Cross News. Well, spring is in the Air Peninsula and so is romance with the city to host a wedding expo this weekend. Casey Trelaw checked out all a bride could want on her big day. It's one of the biggest days of a couple's life and a group of Port Lincoln businesses have teamed up to showcase everything the Air Peninsula has to offer when it comes to the big day. We have the very first Air Peninsula Wedding and Events Expo. It's very exciting. I don't think, in my experience, being in the business for a long time, I've never seen anything so big put together in one spot. There'll be a total of 39 vendors on show in the Nautilus Arts Centre, where brides and grooms can tick off their wedding checklist. There'll be everything from cakes, makeup, flowers, displays, celebrants, invitations, food and much more. And for the brides, the most important shopping item of all. One of the main things we lack over here is um, wedding dresses and obviously it's a very important part of the day so we approached the Bride Lab from Adelaide and they're bringing some dresses over. The day will also be a chance to showcase why the region is perfect for a destination wedding. But it's becoming really popular. We're getting a lot of inquiries from um, Adelaide, country, um, even coming from uh, Sydney. Now there are still a few tickets available for the expo here on Sunday, but you better get in quick to make the most of this one stop wedding shop. Casey Trelaw, Southern Cross News. And where there's a wedding, you'll probably find flowers. And this weekend, Port Pirie's Pensioners Hall will be the venue for anyone who just adores an orchid. A tricky flower to grow, as Rachel Nell found out. There's a lot to take in when judging an orchid competition. Roundness, good colour, um, nice clean colour, freshness. Um, and it doesn't have to be a lot of flowers, but if there's one or two really good flowers on that. Orchid experts say it's easy to grow the plant, but the hard part is making it flower due to Port Pirie's weather conditions. 60 orchids of different genera here, now they're all local growers and it's been a tough year for growing orchids and they've done pretty well to get this many plants in here. Judges will be looking for a grower's creativity in their entries, awarding up to 10 winners across the various genres of orchids. First and second for each different category, and then we'll pick out a champion from each different genre or type. Rachel Nell, Southern Cross News. Stay with us after the break, our footy tipsters with the late mail on all our teams. And it looks like it'll be a sunny weekend ahead. I'll have all the details up soon. Welcome back. The Teakle Auto Sprint is set to take on the streets of Port Lincoln for the third time, moving to a biennial event. The date for the next big weekend of racing has been locked in for Easter 2020. Organisers are promising more revs and high octane action. And best you don't muck around booking your accommodation because that does tend to go fast. Let's go to our usual Friday night feast of footy fanatics and see who our tipsters believe can get up on the weekend. Hello and welcome to prelim final week of SGL football. This Saturday at Peary's Port Oval, it's the Lions that take on Solly. The Lions come into this match on the back of a stirring win over Port in the elimination final. Solly's will be looking to bounce back after going down to South in last week's qualifying final. This match promises to be a beauty. I'm tipping Solly's in a close one. Last round of Isla football before we play finals. No change to the ladder. So first up on the weekend, Saturday, Bennett Oval, North Isla versus Runa Bay. Both are going to play finals, but I think North will be too good on Saturday. Next game on Saturday at Memorial Oval, it's West Wyler versus Rapina. Despite West now having not been able to beat North four times this year, they'll still actually finish top of the ladder if they win, and I think they will. And finally, on Sunday at Bennett Oval, it's South Wyler versus Central Isla. South will play finals, Central finish bottom, Demons to win. Welcome to Portling and Footy Tips and the last minor round game. We're going to kick things off at Mallee Park, where Mallee Park are hosting Waybacks. This is match of the round and Wayback seem to be in really good form. However, Mallee Park 
I want to be strong in finals. I'm predicting this one to be a close game. Mallee Park's always strong at home, but I think Wayback's going to get the win, and I'm tipping them by two goals. Next, we have Lincoln South hosting Tasmans. Tasmans are a lot stronger than Lincoln South, and they're going to win this one convincingly. In the last game, we got Marble Range, top of the ladder, taking on Boston's bottom of the ladder. Marble Range are playing this one at home at Wongaree, and they're going to win this one convincingly. I'm tipping Marble Range to win this one by more than 10 goals. Breaking the football this week, preliminary finals time, see Central take on North. North have beaten Centrals all year round. Centrals will be looking for a win to get into the grand final, although I believe North will be the easy victors in this game to play South, who haven't lost a game all year. It'll be North in this game, 20 to 30 points. Thanks for that one, tipsters. Now let's see what the Bureau is backing this weekend. Here's Amy with your local forecast. Thanks, Ali, and a happy Friday to you. A mostly fine winter's day around the region. Port Augusta sitting at a warmer 24 degrees, Wyala 21, windy and a top of 20 for Broken Hill. And before we look at the satellite, thank you to Red Doherty, who sent in this beautiful shot of the sunset at Port Germain. We love seeing all your weather snaps, so if you have one you'd like to share, you can email it through to us at localnews at sca.com.au. Back to the satellite now and cloud around a low pressure system is causing showers and the odd thunderstorm mostly along the western coast. Skies are clearer in the north with very dry air. If you're spending your weekend out on the water, southerly winds will shift southwesterly at 15 knots, while seas will reach 1.5 metres. Early birds can catch the sunrise at 6.49, while it will be setting at 5.55. A sunny Saturday forecast across the Spencer Gulf, with maximums reaching into the 20s. 21 for Port Augusta, Wyala sitting at 19 degrees. 20 in Broken Hill and Port Pirie. Possible showers in Port Lincoln early next week, but they should clear by Tuesday. A top of 14 degrees is predicted. Maximums in Cleve and Woodnut will also drop into the mid to high teens. However, mostly sunny conditions will be hanging around. A run of fine weather forecast for Wyala over the next few days, Tuesday reaching a high of 17. Temperatures will drop just slightly in Port Augusta, 20 on Monday, before Tuesday also hits 17 degrees. And in Kadena, the chance of showers on Monday before fine conditions return. Final weather expected by Tuesday in Port Pirie, heading for a maximum of 16. Clare cooling down early into next week with a sunny 12 expected. And in Broken Hill, mostly sunny despite the drop in temperatures, sitting at 14 degrees. So Ali, hopefully it's a chance to get outside and enjoy some sunshine this weekend. Sounds like a great idea. Thanks, Amy, and thank you for your company tonight and this week. Abby Donaldson returns on Monday after her break, so on behalf of the team, enjoy your weekend. <laughs>